feeling like you have too much time on your hands? Find out exactly how much that is in any time zone on this week's MetPie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to show you PyTZ. This is a really great way to deal with all the time zone confusion that we often have in meteorology. Of course, all the models and everything like that is running in GMT, but we have many local time zones, which are where our customers, our people who want to know the forecast or recording rain totals are doing things in local time. And local time has all kinds of fun things like daylight savings time and all the other weird things we do with time. PyTZ helps abstract quite a bit of that away. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples on how to use this. And I've really enjoyed using this when I'm making maps, stamping the time of the model run and stamping the local time for the region that I've shown on my map. All right, so let's get started with some imports. From date time, we're going to import date time. And then we're going to import PyTZ. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is let's create a date time object. And that's what we're going to need to work with for the rest of this exercise. So I'm going to call it now. And it is going to be datetime.now. We can print it so you can see. So you can see we're doing this rather late on a MetPy Monday, Monday. And now we're going to need to create some time zones that we're going to work in. All right, so I want to work in UTC and Mountain Time, where Unidata is. So UTC, we're going to create that with PyTZ.UTC. And that should be a C, there we go. And Mountain Time, we're going to use PyTZ's time zone method and then give it the name of the time zone we want. All right, so pytz.timezone, and this is going to be the US mountain time zone. And again, you can look in the documentation for all of these time zone names. And we've got, there we go, pytz. Okay, so let's look at what these things are. These are time zone objects that know things like if we're on daylight savings time and how many hours offset there is from GMT. Okay, so unfortunately, it's not quite as easy to use as you might think. Uh, what I might try is something like now dot as time zone mountain. And you see you get an output, but it's actually not correct. And this is because we don't know, or we have not assigned a time zone to the actual now time. So what we need to do is localize it first. Say, we're going to tell you what time zone this is in. So I'm gonna create a variable called UTC now, which is UTC, the time zone object, dot localize now. So if we look at UTC now, we can see that it is that now date time, but we have the TZ info attribute here saying that it is UTC. Now, if I take that object and get it as the mountain time zone, then you can see that we indeed get the correct offset now. So that might be a little bit confusing, but just remember that you always need to localize whatever date time you've got and then change the time zone to be whatever time zone that you would like it to be in. Using localize, which is a method that hangs off of the uh, time zone object, and then you use as time zone, which hangs off the actual date time object. Okay, so one more application because it might be a little less clear how you're going to do this. I'm going to create a list of forecast hours. And so they are date time objects. And we'll start at 0z today. And we'll go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 0. Now you could, of course, use uh, time range and so on. 
But instead of trying to introduce several new topics, we're just going to focus on PyTZ here. All right, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and 21. So now if we look at that list, it is indeed a list of date time objects. I want to convert those to mountain time because I want to know what those model times are in my local time zone so I can show them on the map. All right, well, the first thing that we're going to need to do, remember, is to localize. So I'm going to take the forecast hour list and I'm going to use a list comprehension. All right, so what this list comprehension is doing is saying for each item T in the forecast hour list, I'm going to call it utc.localize on that item, and I'm going to make a new list. So if we look at that, now each of those has the TZ info attribute. So now we're going to make forecast hour local. And again, we'll use a list comprehension. We're going to, as time zone, the mountain time zone object. So for each element T and forecast hour, we're going to call as time zone mountain and create a new list. So now if we look at the forecast hour local, there we see we've got the local date times for each of those forecast hours in UTC. Again, this is a really helpful utility and you shouldn't have to keep track of these things yourself. That's just more places to introduce errors in your code. So let libraries like DateTime and PyTZ, which are extensively tested, help reduce the code that you have to write and make sure that your results are correct. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.